Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and Module 4, Ecosystem Dynamics. This is video number 5 and we're going to be talking a little bit about sampling techniques. Our learning intention for this video is that you'll be able to investigate and determine relationships between biotic and abiotic factors in an ecosystem, including measuring populations of organisms using sampling techniques. In order to measure your success, you can either describe a method of sampling a population, use a named sampling technique to estimate the size of a population, or to evaluate the efficacy of different sampling methods for accurately estimating the size of different populations in an ecosystem. So there are a number of different levels in which we can understand how we can get an idea of distribution and abundance within a particular ecosystem. So let's have a look at a few of these. To set us up, when we're looking specifically at distribution and abundance, we need to remember that the change in population density is basically going to be found by adding births and arrivals, also known as immigrants, and subtracting deaths and departures, which we've also called immigrants. So anything that's moving into the area from another area would be regarded as an immigrant. It would add to the numbers. And anything that's leaving the area uh, would be regarded as an emigrant, with an E, and uh, would be uh, something departing the area, would actually subtract from our overall population density. It's important to remember that ecological boundaries are human constructs, so they're not things that, that the living organisms sort of see little dotted lines uh, in the sand and don't cross. They will, of course. And so we need to keep these sorts of things in mind when we're looking at measuring particularly population density. We've talked previously about these two ideas of distribution and abundance. And just to um, uh, refresh our memories, I guess, distribution is where the organisms are and abundance is how many there are. So we've got a number of different sampling techniques that we can use in order to determine where, in a general sense, the different types of species are found in an ecosystem and also to get a rough idea of the actual numbers of species that there are. Of course, the technique that we, used, uh, that we use depends on whether they are mobile or not. So most animals, for example, are mobile and they will move uh, throughout the course of the day from one place to another and they won't stay still while you're trying to count them necessarily. So that makes them a little more difficult to count. On the other hand, while plants don't move around, sometimes we can look at particularly grasses, how you how do you count the number of grasses? So that's obviously a very difficult thing to do. So we need to use slightly different types of methods, things like uh, percentage cover, maybe something that we use in order to get a sense of the um, overall abundance of a particular type of plant in an ecosystem. So I've just listed here some of these different types of um, techniques that you may uh, just sort of scroll through, tick off as some of the things that you may have already used or you may be familiar with in terms of each of these important uh, measures, distribution and abundance. So distribution from total sketches or aerial maps. Drones have been a fantastic uh, tool for ecologists to now get up above an ecosystem and have a good bird's eye view of what's going on. Profile sketches, uh, belt transects, we have talked about line transects, which we, which we used for our uh, rock platform study, but a belt transect is basically taking that line transect and extending it out by, say, a metre on each side to give us a uh, thick strip rather than just a single line. Uh, partial surface mapping, cameras obviously are fantastic, particularly if you can set cameras up um, to record over periods of time, you can come back. We did that too. Uh, by putting a couple of the GoPros into those little rock pools uh, with some bait to see what, what came uh, as a result of that. Uh, and, and tagging methods are another method too of identifying the distribution of different organisms within an ecosystem. When we come to abundance, then there's, I guess, a smaller number of options available to us. The most accurate ways to count everything. So total counts are like... Uh, surveying the entire population. So that only happens during a general election uh, because it's just too expensive, it's just too difficult, it's too time, uh, labour-intensive, time-intensive to count every single organism. 
So we tend to sample. We tend to try and look at techniques that give us a small portion of an ecosystem that we can then extrapolate out to cover. So we wouldn't try and count every single rock in a rock platform. We'd take a couple of different samples from different places and extrapolate those um, numbers out to cover the entire area. Some of the sampling techniques that we've used include things like line transects, uh, estimates of percentage cover, uh, using quadrants, and also capture recapture. And a couple of those we'll talk about just a little bit in this particular video. So the sampling techniques I want to just focus on a little bit more in this video are, first of all, total counts. And for all practical purposes, this is just uh, not usually possible. It's expensive. Uh, it's time consuming. It's not something that we tend to do very often. Capture recapture is a little bit uh, more common. Um, this is the sort of thing where you have um, a population, you go out and you collect as many as you can. Um, that may be something simple as picking up uh, snails, or it may be setting up little nets that you can catch little organisms in. You need to tag them in some way. And the important thing about a tag is a tag should not disadvantage the organism. That is, it shouldn't be so obvious that it, say, makes it more obvious to predators than untagged um, individuals, because then you're actually shifting uh, what's going on evolutionary, in an evolutionary sense, okay? You're actually giving predators, say, an easier time of seeing their prey because of what you've done, not because of anything to do with them. Um, so we get it. So if we go out and we collect a population, then then at some point later on, usually um, it depending on the type of organisms you're looking at counting, that can be a day, a week later on. Then you go and you recount, which means you try and collect a second population of or a second sample from that population. What you'll find is a total number that you have for that population, plus you will get a number of repeats. So these are the ones that were tagged. And it works as a um, proportionality. So obviously, if the second time around, you found only tagged organisms, then N2 and NR would actually cancel one, and out and you'd, one another out and you just have your, your uh, initial population. Of course, that's usually not going to happen. So it'll only be some portion. So if, say, um, your second sample was 60 and your um, number of repeats or tags was six, then basically that's telling us that about a tenth of the population is visible at any given um, time. And so we can extrapolate that to work out what the um, total was from our initial count. And that's really all it is. It's just using fractions in order to give us an idea of the total. Now, obviously, the way we count this can affect the numbers that we get. And these are just numbers that we plug into formulas. So we need to understand exactly where they've come from and why this sort of um, technique works. And again, if we're going to increase our reliability, then we want uh, multiple samples. Then we want multiple samples. So we don't want to just collect them from one place, we want to collect them from a few places, average them out and see what's going on. Uh, the quadrant is here. So you can see here's a nice quadrant. It's, um, it, it, these sorts of quadrants make life a lot easier, particularly if they're say a 10 by 10 quadrant, because if you're looking at something like percentage cover, which would be a good way to measure the plants here, look like ferns, um, they uh, much easier if you count the number of squares and if you've got 60 squares of plants and you know that there's 100 squares altogether, well, it's very easy to work out a 60% cover. So quadrants are a very good way for us to um, take a number of samples from a number of different places, and we did this with our rock platform. The other one is the transect. This is our line transect, so it's just running a straight line, and we're going to usually have it marked at particular intervals, and we're going to check what is happening at each of those intervals. To change that from a line transect to a belt transect, we would just run basically uh, either side of our line. Uh, a Say, a meter ruler can, can just sit there and you can see exactly what's happening all the way along. So a little bit more 
um, accuracy there, a little bit more information if we try and count everything along that transect. You can see that the method you choose is going to be very much around the um, finance, the amount of money you have to spend, the amount of time you have to spend, the importance of the accuracy. So does it is it critically important that you do this if you're counting uh, numbers of endangered species, for example, you might want to try and get these counts as, as accurate as you possibly can. Whereas if you're trying to count um, insects on a tree, you're probably trying to, a ballpark is, is probably going to be okay. Uh, particularly um, if there are populations that only exist for short periods of time, they are going to continue to turn over all of the time. So the method of sampling that we choose is going to depend on what we're trying to count. Uh, well, we're looking at distribution. Are we looking at abundance on the um, resources that we have available to us in terms of finance and time and also on the practicalities um, and keeping in mind uh, other peripheral issues um, like safety, which isn't necessarily a peripheral issue, but it's not always going to be as obvious. Um, in the second of these in the transect, you can see this looks like a rock platform with waves crashing at the low tide mark and of course that creates additional challenges for us when we're trying to measure uh, distribution and abundance because obviously we don't want to put ourselves in danger. These are some of the techniques that you use when you're on the rock platform. Hopefully um, having a chance to go and do a little bit of field work is probably the best way to familiarise yourself with these different sampling techniques. But hopefully this has been a good quick overview and we'll look at a few more of these in a bit more detail in class. Thanks for watching.